Hello YouTubers out there, this is Jerry at the Movies. Today I'm briefly going to talk about Scott Schwartz, and as you see from the still here from A Christmas Story, the kid with uh, the tongue stuck on the pole on a double dog dare. Many of you will recognize it, of course, uh, that scene. Anyway, that's Scott Schwartz, and uh, he was a former child actor of the 80s. And I had the pleasure of interviewing him uh, recently. Um, so, what was interesting to find out about Scott Schwartz is that he had been uh, actively working since then. Now, a little uh, brief uh, recap. Um, Scott Schwartz appeared in Christmas Story, 1983, a film by the late Bob Clark. And uh, he was also in the film The Toy, uh, from 1982, with Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason. Uh, he was the best thing in it. I don't really care for the toy, but uh, he was the best thing in it. Um, I think he played a rich kid in there, and uh, his uh, babysitter, or kind of slave, actually, is uh, Richard Pryor. Jackie Gleason plays the father of uh, Scott Schwartz's uh, character. Um, also, he was in a film that a uh, few people talk about. I don't know if it's developed a cult or not. Um, from 1984 called Kid Co, which uh, is a film that was barely released in theaters. Um, so anyway, I got to ask Scott Schwartz some uh, questions uh, about him. He first got into acting when he was nine years old, and uh, some person knew him from going to the movies uh, with Scott's dad and asked if he wanted to do a commercial, and that's how he got started. Um... Now, uh, Kidco, uh, which is a favorite of mine uh, from that period, was barely released in 1984. Now, the, the plot of that film deals with kids living on a horse ranch who decide to sell the excess manure as fertilizer, and uh, but their new company soon comes under fire from the state tax board. Now, I had asked him why the film didn't get distribution that it deserved. Um, it's it's a, technically a comedy, but the film is very low-key, which uh, even for the 1980s was uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but perhaps it was too low-key, too subtle to really score with uh, any sort of audience. Anyway, the director of the film was Ronald F. Maxwell, who later on did uh, 1993's Gettysburg and the sequel, uh, Gods and Generals. Anyway, the, I'd asked him what happened with the film, and uh, he said that the film was finished in late 1982, it sat for about a year, and Ron Maxwell had some pull and got a courtesy release in Alabama the spring of 1984, which was the same weekend as a little movie called Splash was released, which of course became a huge box office success. Now, Kidco had a small $4 million budget, but unfortunately 20th Century Fox had no faith in the film, so that was that. And uh, anyway, he liked working with the director. He hopes to again. And uh, he never treated the kid actors as kids. He treated them as actors. And uh, so that's the story with that. Now, it is actually based on a true story, Kid Co. It's uh, based on the Sasena, I think is how you pronounce it, family of Southern California. And they built an empire cleaning up horse manure and killing gophers. <laughs> so... Uh, that's that was the basis of that. Now the toy I asked him about, and I had been curious because sometimes when you work with comics in a film, there's always a little bit of tension, uh, depending on if they get along or not. And I asked him about the toy, and if Jackie Gleason and uh, Richard Pryor got along, or if there was tension. And uh, there was no tension whatsoever. They were very professional. And one thing I'd known about Richard Pryor already was that uh, he was a very quiet, very studious when not actually shooting a, a scene. But uh, when he was asked to be funny, he, he was funny. Um, Mr. Gleason, he said, was a real professional, and uh, everyone seemed to get along. Uh, Scott Schwartz got the film, The Toy, after seven auditions and three screen tests. So that's the story with that. Now... He also appeared in Raiders of the Living Dead in 1986 and uh, a few other films and TV appearances. And then Scott Schwartz uh, 
went on a different direction. He became part of the adult film industry, and he left claiming he got tired of the industry. So I'd asked him, of course, about that. I mean, how can I not? And he said that in the adult film industry, he worked for a talent agency, a production office, a video salesman, just about any job you can think of. But uh, he didn't really want to speak too much about it. He's actually writing a book based on, um, I guess, his experiences as a child actor and the adult film industry. He says it came down to dollars and cents. It was paying the bills, and it was whatever it took to take care of him, have a roof over his head and food on the table. And one thing he said was that being a child actor, while rewarding, is truly a bad job. He says that they all grow up, and if the right people don't take to us and keep us working, most are out of work by 15 to 18 years old, and have no idea what the real world is. And it's interesting, he, he brought out a, a fascinating insight. He said that nobody, uh, basically most people at every job, don't have someone bring them coffee and bagel in the morning and ask what they want for lunch and so on. So uh, that's the story with the adult film industry. Uh, he didn't turn down necessarily any jobs. He took any job that came to him. So there you have it, an actor that's part of the reality. Uh, Scott Schwartz has also been a collector and a movie buff. Um, he has a location, a store, uh, rather, at uh, Woodland Hills, California. And uh, it's called Sports and Movie Stuff. And it's all collectibles. It's a 4,000 square foot store. And there's everything from anything related to Star Wars, uh, Pride of the Yankees, Barry Bond stuff, Julius Irving. Um, the actor, uh, actually, Julius Irving, you may know from uh, The Fish Who Saved uh, Pittsburgh, which is uh, one of uh, Scott's uh, favorite films. Um, anything related to Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, uh, William Shatner, all kinds of stuff, and sports memorabilia as well. This was uh, a love of his since the 1980s. Um, and he basically doesn't have one film that he chooses as his favorite, at least from back in the heyday of the 80s. Uh, he says Christmas Story, he generally just watches the scenes he was in, and that was it. So, uh, But his own favorite films uh, that are not films he was in, are Blazing Saddles, Pride of the Yankees, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, Fish at Safe uh, Pittsburgh, Rocky, and uh, Galaxy Quest. So, there you have it. That's the story of Scott Schwartz. Um, I'm always interested, again, in uh, talking to people who were at once a bright, shining star, and then the star dimmed. But, uh, to me, they're not washed up. There is a site out there called WashedUpCelebrities.com or something of that nature that basically puts down anyone who they they consider a has-been. Uh, Margot Kidder's on the list, uh, so is Scott Schwartz. Chuck Berry, but that makes no sense because the man uh, certainly anything but washed up. Um, but I'm interested in talking to people who had been in the business and do, uh, you know, especially as child actors, which is one of the tougher jobs. I mean, Jodie Foster got by, but uh, Kurt Russell, but generally it's not, not easy. So it was just a pleasure to talk to him uh, briefly. And uh, that's a story about Scott Schwartz. So just in time for the holidays with a Christmas story, I definitely tell, urge you to uh, watch Christmas Story if you haven't, which I'm sure many of you have. And definitely look for Kid Co. Let's uh, get a campaign going. This film really deserves more of a, more attention than it's gotten. And this is Jerry the Movies, signing off.